Now, while the Dow just touched its highest level in nearly three weeks today, it's still on track for its worst month since January. The S&P and Nasdaq are having their worst month since last October. And Morgan Stanley is warning that anyone buying into last week's rally is in for trouble, saying valuations are too frothy, the global supply chain is a mess, the government is on a crash course with a shutdown, and Fed tapering is just around the corner. Does my next guest agree? Joining me now is David Bonson. He is chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. Are you more sanguine, David, or, or how do you think things are shaping up here? Well, it depends on the timeline they're talking about. I mean, Mike Wilson, who wrote that report, I worked with him at Morgan Stanley, and uh, he tends to lean negative mm-hmm. quite a bit. I think he's made a similar call to this about 15 times lately. And like all people pointing out pretty logical things that don't look good all the time in the markets, the markets have had an opinion of their own. And so uh, I wouldn't make any short-term decisions around that report from Morgan Stanley. Um, I I hopefully don't have clients that are making short-term decisions at all, though. You know, we want to be able to have a little longer-term view. And so that's where the sanguine comes from, is that we do believe through time the way that uh, particularly our dividend orientation is positioned will do quite well. But as far as the markets needing an excuse to have a correction or some downside volatility, there's plenty of excuses out there to choose from. There's a ton of investors, David, breathing a huge sigh of relief to see financials and energy back in the leadership. You know, people who were overpositioned, looking for rates to finally move to the upside and so forth. Is this really sustainable, though? And, and should the trades remain married? I mean, on the energy side, I see that Chevron is one of your picks, but I just have to wonder how high oil prices can remain, how much higher they can keep going. You know, maybe we've got a few more months of this ahead of ourselves, but if we start going back to 100 or over a barrel, I have to imagine there's going to be long-term demand destruction. There's going to be screaming from mm-hmm. policymakers, expanded supply. You know, why is Chevron a name you want to bet on for the long run? Well, our thesis on Chevron has absolutely nothing to do with the price of oil. And so there's sort of two different questions there. I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. Oil prices getting near $100 are not good for the energy sector. It drives a lot of margin for the short period of time. But as you exactly pointed out, long-term demand destruction is a real phenomenon. There is sort of a sweet spot in this supply-demand crux. I suspect it's between 60 and 80. We're at the upper end of that range now, back above 75. Chevron makes an awful lot of money at $60 oil. So the price of the commodity is not the thesis. It's that the valuation of the company is extremely low relative to its normalized free cash flow. And, and Chevron is a 5.5% dividend payer in a weak part of the market, we think has plenty of, ba- of, of road ahead. Uh, but you also have to remember the natural gas story and the downstream oh, yeah. story. These are integrated companies. Chevron has a lot of ways they can make money regardless of the oil price. No, and this is going to be such an important story. I feel like I could talk to you about only that. I want to mention you also like 3M, uh, LYB, Blackstone here. So there are, there are a number of other things going on. But just to take the example of Chevron for a moment, then, is it that you don't think the oil price is relevant or that you think it's going to stay in the 60 to 80 dollar range? Because, again, the the yield, like you said, five and a half percent is tantalizing. But if you look at the size of the energy sector in the S&P 500, it is it has not recovered from where it has dwindled to. In other words, you just have to wonder if investors really see a lot of potential here for strong returns in the years ahead. Well, plenty of investors don't, which makes us like it even more. So the the fact that there's a sentiment issue is an argument in my favor. Mm -hmm. I don't like to bet on things that all the sentiment is already positioned there. But by the way, Chevron has basically doubled from its low point of COVID, and energy is a lower percentage of the S&P than it was at that point. Mm. How is that even possible? Because the overall market has moved even more. So there's a sort of relative weighting in this as well. But we're pure bottom-up people, Kelly. And when we look at the Chevrons and some of the energy names, we particularly like Midstream, we just believe that it's a story that American supply is understated right now. We need more production. And you're exactly right. If oil prices continue going higher, I don't care what people's political orientation is. They're going to demand more U.S. production of oil which I happen to think is cleaner and better for the environment uh, than Middle Eastern producers anyways. But at the end of the day, we have a, a story here of a company that has a very important place in the American energy narrative that I just think is underpriced. 
and the sentiment and some of the technical and extraneous factors can't ever change the fundamentals of cash flow generation, yeah. they have really reduced their cost structure. And so we like the profit margins going forward as well. I mean, and we've seen the performance of, you know, going back to the altrias of the world after that era of divestment it sort of speaks for itself. Oh, yeah. So we'll see if this is the same story or not. David, we'll leave it there. Thanks for your time today. Hope to check back in soon. Thank you. David Bonson is the CIO of the Bonson Group.